So what are the major parts of the crude oil that we want to deal with? We've already spoken about some, gasoline or petrol, diesel, but we'll go into more detail about what each one is used for right now. So first is refinery gas. So this is anywhere between C1, which is methane, to C4, which could be butane. And it's used as a fuel sometimes, so you can burn it. It's good to burn as well. Or it can start as a precursor to plastic, so we can use it to to produce plastic in the future, or we can use it as a petrol additive. Okay? So gasoline is C5 to C12. On average, we like to think of it as C8 or octane, so that's the average sort of molecular size. And it's used as obviously motor fuel because it's petrol, gasoline. Uh, it's also a petrochemical solvent or this thing called naphtha. So kerosene is C11 to C15, so 11 to 15 carbons long. It's used as aviation fuel, so we're talking planes here, so gas turbine fuel. And it's also the, a starting material for catalytic cracking, which we'll go through in shortly. Okay? So even heavier for the big trucks and also some cars, we've got diesel and gas oil, which is 15 to 18 carbons long. And it's a fuel and it's also a heating, um, a fuel for use for heating. So we've got transport and heating for this diesel. Uh, lubricating oils, so anywhere between C16 to C20. So as you can see, there's a bit of overlap in some of them because of that boiling point range. So we've got 18 and 20 sort of mixing together here. But the lubricating oil is simply just used as lubricating oil to stop things from jamming. And also as a starting material, again, for catalytic cracking. So again, we'll go through what that means in a sec. Paraffin waxes, so we're talking about candle wax here. Um, so anywhere between C20 to C40, and it's also used for that wax paper. So we're talking just wax here, essentially. It's very, very heavy, very solid. Um, it's solid at room temperature, and so that's what we use it for. And lastly, C40 and above, the very, very heaviest stuff is bitumen, essentially. So the stuff we put on our roads to make them smooth um, and stick together, all that gravel um, or asphalt, is this C40 or bigger kind of um, fraction of the, of the petroleum. It's also used as roofing tar as well. So we spoke about catalytic cracking, I mentioned it, and now we'll talk about exactly what it is. And in order to understand why we do it, we need sort of to know what the motivation is. So essentially the petrol yield, so remember gasoline petrol, so fuel yield, is too low to meet the demand. Because everyone loves to drive their car around, um, everyone loves to have a car on hand, so we need fuel for that. And the demand for it is higher than what we can get out of the petrol. Okay? So what we do is we use this catalytic cracking process to increase the yield of petrol by breaking up big chains into small chains that are suitable for use in petrol. Okay? So we have this huge chain, then we break it down into small chains which we can use as petrol, and then all of a sudden we have more petrol available. Right? Because remembering these bigger chains don't have as much demand, so we can afford to break them down into petrol-sized carbon uh, hydrocarbons. So an example of catalytic cracking, which would be octane plus steam. So steam is, is just the heat in this case. We just need some sort of heat. Uh, breaks up into hexane plus ethene. So C18 plus steam goes to form C6H14, which is hexane, and ethene. So now we've spoken about what catalytic cracking, what, um, how we refine petroleum, and where it comes from, and why we refine it, and what the uses for it are.